This is the tiniest mob ever added to Minecraft. And here's a mushroom fields mound that's so small, it didn't generate with any mushrooms. And these are the smallest things you'll find in Minecraft. And keep an ear out, since we also talked to special guest inside of this video. But first, we got a problem. The analytics gods told me that next to no one is subscribed to the channel using their left hand. So if you want to help break down that right hand supremacy, then take a southpaw strike that sub button below. It's free, and it helps out a ton. With the advent of bees in the 1.15 overhaul, Mojang gave us something new to put in our bottle. And while that's nice, there is a little detail here I can't quite understand. If you look at the two textures, you can see that a honey bottle is four pixels more full than a water one. Which is strange, but maybe that's why we can't craft water blocks like so. This is a dolphin, and this is a baby dolphin. But you'll only find the baby versions of these mobs over on the Bedrock Edition. And the same goes for squids and glow squids. But considering you can't breed the mobs on either version, you can only find these by them spawning in. Did you know Minecraft added in bugs? Well, not the ones in the code, but if we follow this user's advice, then we're able to make ourselves some pretty cute looking bugs to decorate our world. First, we drop an armor stand into the hole, push a block into its head, and then mix together an invisible item frame and some crimson vines to give ourselves the legs. At which point, you can add an abundant of any color that you choose, and you'll have mixed together the head, body, and legs of your new bug. Just make sure no one comes by and presses the button. That'll squish it. Ocean monuments are nothing new to see, but something like this seems a bit more peculiar. After all, the way that this generated, it seems more like a lake monument than an ocean one. Now, sure, the biome is still technically labeled an ocean, but with a ring of land on all sides, it's really hard to call it one. But I will say this makes a pretty great candidate for your next guardian farm at your base. And if you ask me, that's benefit enough to toss aside the labels, just reap the rewards. This might look like a fall to certain death, and really, it will be. Unless you're able to land in the one pixel worth of water coming from this waterlogged chest. And the reason it's exactly one pixel is that chests are exactly one pixel smaller than a block on all sides. And if you really want to make this trick seem even more impressive visually, then you can let the water flow as far as possible into the chest core corner so that it's also as thin as it possibly could be. <laughs> At this point, I just think it's funny that this near microscopic amount of water is able to break our fall up well, something like a cauldron's never been able to. And honestly, if it gives me another opportunity to call out the cauldron for being a bad block, that's a worthwhile skill in its own right. This mushroom fields biome spawned in with only three blocks above the water and with no mobs or trees in sight, which really begs the question, how small can a biome be before it's no longer considered a biome? But seeing as mycelium blocks only spawn in in a mushroom fields biome, Biome, this does make the cut. And really, just imagine traveling thousands of blocks to try and find a mushroom island, only to find this instead. Ouch. Because lily pads are rendered so thin, if you were to run on top of a row of these, you'll notice that the particles that you give off from your feet are actually the water particles instead of the lily pads. Which I actually think makes sense. It's like your feet are splashing up water instead of splashing up parts of the lily pad. While you get the most experience from cooking ancient debris in a furnace, you know what gives you the least amount of experience? Well, sure enough, if you're cooking up your core fruit or your kelp in a furnace, as an XP farm, you're wasting your time. Considering that these items can give you an average of 0.1 experience points. And sometimes that means they'll give you no XP at all. And considering dried kelp isn't even that great of a food source, I don't think this is worth doing in the first place. Steve's ability to crawl into small spaces is a definite game changer. But with that newfound ability, Mojang intended for a few different limits. Like, for example, how you're not able to move from a one block tall space to a 0.5 block tall space using a slap. After all the player isn't exactly a contortionist. But if we place snow layers in a stack like such, we can just happen to get in a space as thin as the slab would allow. So if the caves aren't claustrophobic enough for you, this might do the trick. The cauldron might be the ugly duckling of the Minecraft world. And while we've talked about its many shortcomings before, this one recently caught my attention as well. Even though we can place a whole bucket's worth of water in this thing, it still doesn't allow for the Riptide enchantment on tridents. Which would be fine if Riptide also didn't work on waterlogged blocks. But as you can plainly see, even standing on the virtual puddle that we have on top of a waterlogged chest, you're able to launch yourself just the same as standing in the ocean. When you fly with an elytra, you're able to fit through a one by one space. And a setup like this with multiple rings that get progressively smaller and smaller will prove that, especially if you're flying faster. At that point, it's hard to even tell what a ring is, let alone if you're flying through it. And then if you add in having to turn into the rings, that'll also greatly increase the difficulty. But by increasing the difficulty like that, it does make it a more impressive skill to learn. So if you're looking to show off your elytra course to your friends, next time you're flying through on the server, this is a good way to do it. Unless we're talking about the secret killer rabbit, the bunnies in Minecraft are nothing to be afraid of. Though, someone at Mojang disagrees. Because when Ravagers were tested in Snapshot 18W43A, these pillager monsters were afraid of rabbits. Which is a fun easter egg, but unfortunately, Jeb confirmed in a tweet that he was removed to maintain the beast's lore. If you watch closely, you'll notice that in Bedrock Edition, Steve actually blinks. But in Java, that's not the case for Steve, Alex, or any of the new skin variants 
added in. And thank goodness, it's pretty creepy to watch. With the armadillo coming to Minecraft, it's time that we give it something to eat too. And that's what this user thought when they made this termite mound for the armadillo. But I know what you're thinking, we don't exactly have termites in Minecraft. And that's why this is so ingenious. Because by just using melon seeds inside of an invisible item frame, from far away, they look like the bugs. And I think that's just adorable. You can even rotate them to add extra character. Very nice. Banners open up a ton of options, but that doesn't excuse their setbacks. Let's face it, a two by one rectangle isn't always the size you're looking for. And while they might not fix that entirely, maybe armor stands are the next solution. As it turns out, by putting banners in either an armor stand's hand or head, you can keep the detail all while the item gets smaller. Flowers offer a cute way to add a splash of color to your build, but by this point, everyone's seen the standard offerings. So to get a bit more unique, the new spore blossom might be my new favorite. See, by placing down one of these in an invisible item frame, we can shrink down the size and attach these to both our floors and our walls, giving us a new plant to play around with and a fun detail for those lush caves. Pop quiz, what block is shorter than a slab? Actually, it's a cauldron, because clearly the block itself when you place them side by side doesn't look that much smaller, but rather when you stand inside of a cauldron, then you'll be standing at half the height of someone who's standing on top of a slab. This flower looks illegal, but it used to spawn in version 1.8. And the reason for this strange sight is that when the game generates where the plant should be on the plains biome, it does that before the puddles are actually generated into the world. So while it might have thought that there was supposed to be a flower there, when it later decides that there should be a lake there as well, it deletes the grass block, and now you've got this floating flower head like this. Which is strange, but it's actually a lot closer to how the item renders when you place it on the floor. Which ends up being a nice coincidence, even if it was an error in the code. Why is this minecart different from the others? Well, as it turns out, the minecart hopper is a slightly different texture as opposed to the other ones. And not just on top, but if you look at the bottom, you'll see that the hopper part of the minecart actually pokes through the bottom. Which makes sense, otherwise the items would just fill up into the basin, and that doesn't seem all that helpful. But if you didn't look at it from this point, I don't think any of us would have noticed. If you take a close look at your netherite tools, you'll notice that they're different from your regular tools in more ways than one, since that netherite ingot that we added in the smithing table also seems to have added into the handle on the sprite, giving us the only tools in the game that don't have a stick for their handle. Which I think makes sense, it explains how we reinforce all of the tool's durability instead of just the top for the pickaxe. If you were to put a sapling right up next to build height and then bone meal it, it will grow, but exactly one log. Meaning that even the rules of nature have to follow zoning permits. And honestly, I just think this is a really funny sight to see. And it makes me thankful that Skyblock is actually built at the bottom of the world and not up next to the build limit. Otherwise, that new tree would be a lot more disappointing. What do you think of when you see a wandering trader? Well, if you're anything like me, you see this as a free source of leads and leather. But that's only part of the story. Since when we take the llamas away from their trader companion, we can actually breed them for some special results. No joke, all it takes is breeding the special llamas and you'll get an offspring with their same unique design, which is a pretty cool souvenir to have. So while it might still be more valuable to pocket the leads, this could be a way to dress up your next caravan, if that's something you're interested in. Minecraft famously has its share of visual quirks, and while we've talked at length about those in the past, this one just cracks me up. See, if we were to hold a ladder as an item in our hands, it has about the same amount of depth as anything else. But when you place that same ladder on the side of a block, it turns paper thin. I mean, this ladder has less depth than a ladder item dropped on the floor. And unless we get something like default 3D in the base game, I guess it'll be a fun thing to notice going forward. I'm gonna come out and say it, I don't like baby piglins. I know, that might sound harsh, but honestly, these things are good for nothing except stealing my gold. But unfortunately for us, that situation isn't bound to change. Since, as coded, baby piglins will never become adults. Meaning we're stuck with a couple of bratty kids running around and ruining our commerce. And honestly, if I wasn't trying to stay on the parents' good side, I'd take after Anakin and get rid of the younglings. The textures in the game are fairly simplistic, to say the least. Which sometimes means it's hard to make out what's what. Like the hearts you see while riding a horse. For the longest time, I never understood the texture. But thanks to user LittleDominator64 on Reddit, a closer look actually shows their saddles, which I'll admit zoomed out is still pretty hard to see. But once you put them side by side, the picture clears up, especially if you recognize the pixels of the metal bit of the spur. Now, I won't claim it's a great texture, but hey, now I know what it's supposed to be, and maybe you do too. Oftentimes, an animator's work goes underappreciated, since if they did their job right, you shouldn't be able to notice it much. It should just fit right in. But today, I'd like to give a little spotlight to an animation you might not have noticed. And luckily, our subjects for that are these adorable sleeping foxes. See, if we move in for a closer look, you'll notice that these snoots and somethings actually have a subtle breathing animation. Is it a big detail? Not at all. But I do think it's nice to recognize the little tidbits that the developers added in. And as far as that goes, this is right up there in my mind with the sea lantern's glowing animation. According to Mojang,
Jang, honey is the stickier block when compared to slime blocks. But why do these only stick to slime blocks then and not the honey block? Well, even though it's on the bug tracker, the reason is because honey is 14 by 15 by 14, while a slime is a full 16 pixels on each side. And that would be why we can't put our vines, glow like, and then the rest on top of these, just because there's not enough room. Finding Minecraft details can be a tricky process, and sometimes the real secrets don't come from the game itself. For instance, take the iron golem. Now, in game, I always figured this red pixel functioned as the pupil, but no, all it takes is one look at the official 2019 Valentine's Day post from Mojang's Instagram to see that the red part is actually the golem sclera. So, does that mean that this is canon? Well, I guess I don't know. After all, there was the famous bluestone incident from the Village and Pillage trailer, so maybe promotional art isn't always to be trusted. But if I had to bet on my assumption versus the artist's rendition, I'd pick the official every time. But that's not the only mob stuck where it's not supposed to be, since if you actually look at these walls we placed nearby, you notice that there's a frog placed inside of the gap. As Razeworks pointed out, the frog's hitbox is so small that it can squeeze right in between four walls placed in a square like so. Sometimes you gotta pick the lesser of two evils. So while sweet berries might be a pain while you're walking around, turns out they're invaluable when it comes to falling. You see, the way that Minecraft calculates fall damage, there are certain things that can reset your fall distance midair. And as it happens to be, berry bush damage is one of them. Getting pricked by one of these, even if you fall from sky limit, is enough to take away all the fall damage and keep you safe. And if you really don't want to take any chances, this even works with baby bushes, which won't even prick you on your way down, which I'd definitely call a sweet deal. Scale in Minecraft is a funny thing, and while some of it makes no sense, like why are the husks taller than the zombies, other examples are pretty satisfying. Say we grab ourselves a dropper. Now, by itself, there's nothing too satisfying about it, but throw a button on the face and you'll notice that it's the exact right size for the dropper's mouth. And in my book, it makes the dropper look more like a wine bottle than a piece of redstone. Though, I'll add that this only works with certain orientations. Because thinking about it, it's probably for the best that we don't gag them anyway, but if you want a neat detail for your building, this might fit that bill. As we all know, when you see something, the trouble's unseen it. And that exact thing happened to me when I took a closer look at Minecraft signs. Now, when you face them dead on, they seem just fine. Normal, if anything. But once you step to the side, it's easier to notice this hidden detail. And in fact, the text that we typed floats right off the sign. Which is a bit peculiar, but I guess it makes some sense. After all, you can't expect the texture to change itself, so the solution is to generate the text on top of it. But even if I know the reason why it's there, it doesn't make recognizing it any less weird. Campfires can be a useful decoration to have in your world. But by this point, everyone's already familiar with these things. So to step outside of the box, these armor stands are a sneaky solution. See, when placed in lava, these things burn pretty bright, letting us use a piston to add in our block of choice and successfully create a new illusion. And honestly, I'm surprised it works as well as it does. But it just goes to show that there's a couple more options out there than just using yet another flint and steel and a block of netherrack. Let's face it, no one wants to wait at their desk for hours, which is why going AFK is such a beautiful concept. But what seems like a dream for time management could just as easily be a nightmare. And I've seen far too many times where an AFK trip ends in an unattended death and a loss of items. So to fix that, let's give ourselves somewhere safe to wait. And for that, I think these safety boxes are a brilliant addition. By throwing down a composter with a trapdoor lid, we can squeeze ourselves into place and then shut the box for safety. That way, no monsters that spawn nearby can come over and ruin the operation. And then, when finished, we can hop out and reap the rewards just as planned. This is a bed for me, and this is a bed for my son. Or, it sure looks like that. Because by using some sneaky armor stands like this, we can shrink down our regular items to a much more manageable size. And with just that, we'll have ourselves a child-sized bed and a child-sized chest to keep all their items. Just don't try to open it up. Then the illusion will fall apart. Plains biomes make for great locations for building. Just there, you get lush grass, flat surfaces, and an overall nice atmosphere for your base. But there is one problem point you're sure to notice. Say you're placing the blocks as a foundation for your new house laying them out in a row, only to have your flow interrupted by a measly flower. Since tulips, unlike the neighboring grass, have their own persistent hitbox, meaning we can't just place our blocks as we please. Which means most of the time we see these, they're just gonna be a roadblock to your building flow. As you'll notice, the cartography table has the same texture as the dark oak planks, which means that if we mix one of these cartography workstations into our table like so, it'll look as if we've placed different items on top of the table. And I think that's a really neat effect, especially if you don't have item frames on hand. Or really, even if you did have item frames, there's no way that you're putting three items in the same frame, so this is something special for sure. Here's how to make TNT completely safe. Since, even though a prime TNT might explode like this regularly, if you were to ignite the TNT and then put it onto a half slab, then the amount of blocks that it actually blows up gets significantly smaller. In some cases, only the slab explodes, which is a lot better than the chain reaction we were looking at otherwise. So if you want to explosion-proof your base and you don't have obsidian, then this deal proves that you might be better half off. Baby piglins are an annoying mob for sure, and while that's true in all versions, it seems particularly apparent in the bedrock edition. Over here, we can equip the toddlers with a full set of armor and a sword, and that turns the
these bratty kids into something a lot more sinister. But if you try this, just don't give them a gold sword, otherwise they'll pocket that like any other ingot. Here's how to crawl through a half block space. Now in Java, we're just gonna hit our head on the slabs. It's a roadblock. But at Bedrock, not only does the boat go through, but us along with it. Which could make for a great secret entrance if your friends don't know this trick themselves. After all, we're going through a space even thinner than what a trap door would do. Now Endermites are pretty annoying, but mm -hmm. this is an easy way to get rid of them, since they're so small, they actually just suffocate in soul oh, sand. Aww, that's Aww. so cute. Look at him go. You're gonna have to look closely for this one because witches actually have small mouths that are made underneath their nose. You'll notice that there's two pixels worth of mouth underneath the witch's nose. I'd love to. You'll see when it drinks a potion. Head in the way. Invisible item frames open up a whole range to creative mode building. And while we could fill a whole video just with ideas for those, one of my favorites might just be using these on bushes. By doing this, we can not only add some sparks of color to your hedge maze, but also create our own kind of bushes, whether that's rose, berry, or something entirely new. If you're looking for the fastest way to mine in Minecraft, then you're gonna need this on your leggings. Since even though dive mine has become less popular since its inclusion, with the addition of the swift sneak enchantment, now it's worth doing again. Because the name's misleading. It doesn't just give you a swift sneak, but also gives you a swift crawl. And with swift sneak three on our leggings, we can get some real speed while we're mining a one block tall tunnel. So as long as you don't have claustrophobia, it's worth adding to your to-do list. At the very least, it gives you a reason to go down to the ancient cities, because if we're being honest, recovery compass isn't worth it. Minecraft is famous for some wild and wacky hitboxes. And if you don't believe me, then look no further than the minecart. In this scenario, the cart cannot go past along this rail while the block is placed like such, which seems a bit strict, but I guess it makes sense. That is, until you break that block and place one here instead, and then the whole argument's out the window. Just like platform nine and three quarters, this cart just magically phases through the wall, and that's tough for a muggle like me to wrap my head around. Every time that you see a hopper, there's a hidden cost of five iron ingots and a chest. But what if I told you that a way to cut down on this is to just use the chest and forget the hopper. Instead, alternating like this lets us cut down on how much iron that we have to spend. And the hoppers and chests will still flow the way that we're used to. So if you haven't yet set up that iron farm, this would be the choice that I'd pick for you. If you build your cow farm like this, you're doing it inefficiently. And instead, what you should do is you should bait your cows into a one by one hole like this with a hopper and a chest underneath them. So that, when you continuously breed them, that entity cramming limit's gonna kick in, and after you have 24 cows in your farm, eventually it'll start to kill off the other cows, and you'll have a fully functional automatic farm without even needing that big of a footprint. Steve's technology isn't exactly high tech, so if you're tired of the dark ages and wanna bring your realm into the information age, why not try this? By throwing a gradient banner like this on a shield, you can get a pretty convincing cell phone when it's placed in an item frame. And while I doubt that T-Mobile has coverage on your server, this might be a nifty detail to add to your next desk. With the removal of the Firefly in 1.19, the baby turtle still remains the smallest mob in Minecraft. With the help of glowing sacks and gray dye, we can make our signs look like they're screwed down to the wall. All we need to use is this Unicode symbol called the bullet point, and we'll get that convincing round shape. Which, if we then type our text in the middle of the sign, it's gonna look a lot more important. And it should get your friends to pay attention to the message, so long as they don't dye it a different color. Minecraft trees don't usually have branches, so let's fix that. With the help of hidden armor stands, you can add in little log details to your tree trunk. That way, you don't have to wait for a big oak tree to grow before you get any branches for yourself. Ask anyone in the redstone community, honey blocks changed the game when they were added in. Which, for better or worse, means you need a lot of them for any redstone contraptions you're putting together these days. So obviously, we gotta put our buzzing bees to work and get ourselves a honey farm. Using the designs that people like Il Mango and others have put together, we're able to not only get our bee bar from a pretty small footprint, but we can also stack it. The result is a clean cut way to get all the honey blocks that you'll ever need. And if you're willing to breed all the bees to get enough of them, then you can definitely put one of these together to get all those honey blocks in a relatively fast time. This skin is only possible on Bedrock Edition, since in Java, if you were to have transparent pixels in the first skin layer, it'll just turn them black instead. But in Bedrock, that's not the case, and the only requirement for Bedrock is that you have just one visible pixel, making for this perfect camouflage skin. If you place a trapdoor next to a slab, you notice that the hitbox is laid out in such a way that a trapdoor almost looks like a half-half slab in some way, or a quarter slab, I guess. And with that logic, if we place our spruce trap doors next to our spruce half slabs, we get an extra gradual way to detail our builds. And one that from a distance, I think really sells the illusion that we're going for. Even though Minecraft does have birds, it's funny that the only eggs that we see hatching are turtle eggs. And while I doubt that that's changing anytime soon, we can't at least play pretend using this trick. By throwing down your egg of choice on top of a bed of coral, we can make a pretty convincing egg in a nest effect. And hey, if you can add a waterlogged slab, then the coral sticks will have a lot more color as well. In vanilla Minecraft, there's no way to change your 
size. But with this dollhouse, you'll think that we did. Since if we flip open this trap door to crawl inside, because of the invisible item frames that we used, we can place specific items to look as if they're placed within the world. And while it might fall apart if you take a closer look, things like the bed and the bookshelf on the wall do look quite nice, giving you a very cute build and a very mild case of claustrophobia. This is the shortest block in Minecraft, though from this point of view it might be hard to see that it's even there. But if we move over here, you'll notice that the lily pad is only 1% the size of a normal block. If you're tired of your cat sitting on your chest, then this cage might be the answer. Though that might sound a bit cruel. What's actually happening here is that if we use a piston just right, it's possible to push our pet cat inside of a root block like this. And then with a moss carpet over top so it can't jump out, we make sure our feline stays in timeout. But don't worry, because the blocks are transparent, it's never gonna suffocate or take damage making it slightly less cruel than it would have been. In Java, salmon looks like this, but in Bedrock it's oh so much different. And the reason for that is that in Bedrock Edition, there are three different sizes of salmon that you can find. But in Java, we just got the one. Let's make this tiny bird bath, because for as cute as this looks, it's actually just as simple to build. All we need to do is waterlog a slab, then add in four signs to both block the water and add a lip to the bath bowl. And just like that, we've got the perfect spot for your parrots to hang out and chill, literally. If we tuck a villager into a minecart like this, it's hat will still poke through the floor. So with enough slabs and a shepherd villager, we can make our very own moving Roomba that rides around your floor. And the funniest thing about this is that the villager can still pick up things like bread, carrots, and potatoes, so it'll help you clean up your food scraps after the five second rule. You can't shear a baby sheep, but with a command you can summon a baby that's been sheared. And it looks pretty cursed. Plus it really shows how long the sheep's head is under all that wool. And no amount of wool blocks is worth having to look at this sad sight. In the recent updates, piglin bartering has been a huge help to Minecraft, but if you don't have the best luck on the market, it can take a while. So in that case, building a piglin bartering machine like this is super simple to do, and it can save you a lot of time. The way it works is super simple. All you need to do is just fill the machine with gold and then press the button to let it work. And the way that it does it is super straightforward. All that happens is that a golden ingot will go onto the pressure plate, the piglin will pick it up, and then that'll alert the system to refill. Just like that, you got an endless cycle going, and you'll be able to get the bartering trades going straight down into chest for your uses. You're gonna have to zoom in to see this one, but that's that's kind of the point, since by tucking a button inside an invisible item frame like this, we get the perfect amount of texture and detail to make ourselves beetles crawling on your oak log. And while they're admittedly a lot smaller than the spiders and bees that we already see in the game, let's be honest, I feel like this looks more realistic anyway. And if you built one of these with a glowing item frame, then you might just have a firefly on one of these logs as well, which is nice because they're not in the game otherwise. Weight in Minecraft is a funny thing. Obviously, it takes some serious muscles for Steve and Alex to carry around stacks and stacks of raw materials, but What's even weirder is comparing the strength of Minecraft's other inhabitants. Take the drip leaf plant for example. While it will bend in a few seconds to an item as light as a feather, a literal anvil can hold on top of it with no problem. And then, weirder still is that if we stand on top of that anvil, it doesn't bend. But just us by ourselves? Yeah, you get the picture. If you're building a farm, you might want to use mud blocks instead of grass or dirt. And the reason for this is that mud blocks are just one pixel smaller in their hitbox than grass or sand blocks. And all that one pixel means is that items are actually able to be pulled through through a hopper. And there you have it, just with that simple change, our whole farm design just got so much cheaper. And not to mention the rates get better as well. Really, for the price of crafting a water bottle, it's worth doing this at your next farm. The bee was supposed to be much, much smaller. As shown in this official video put out by Mojang, an early design for the bee would have had it closer in size to the baby turtle. But that's still more appealing than its first design. And when you can't tell if you're looking at the bee's front or its rear, you know you've got to change the look. Abandoned mine shafts are fairly common, but this one seems particularly rare. Now, normally we'd expect these mine shafts to be down in, well, the mines, but this one happened to spawn all the way up inside of an iceberg. Which is even weirder when you consider that this type of behavior should only happen in mesa biomes. And this iceberg feels like the complete and total opposite of that biome. Though at the very least, this does give us some extra daylight outside to keep that spider spawner from giving us any trouble. If you take an extra close look at the top of the bone block texture, you can find this hidden design that starts to peek out. And honestly, the idea to tuck a skull inside of the bone block is maybe a little barbaric, but also pretty funny to see. In science, perpetual motion machines are just a hypothesis. But in Minecraft, it's as simple as eight rails placed together like so. Since by building a square of regular rails like this, if you place a minecart on top of the slope, it'll continue to go around and around the loop, never slowing down. And to make things funnier, you put an entity inside, and that just makes the whole thing speed up. Gold tools aren't 
exactly known for their durability. Or rather, they are, but not for good reason. But have you ever wondered just how bad they are? Well, apparently, it only takes one snow golem to find out. See, if you dig the snow under a snow golem's feet, your golden shovel won't even last four seconds before it shatters. And I know gold's soft in real life, but snow is too, so that just seems pathetic. Spiders don't touch the ground. Ever. We all know that they can climb walls, but it's physically impossible for them to touch the ground. Looking from the side in perfectly normal conditions, you'll notice that they actually float. I don't know why they float. Maybe the creators just didn't notice because of how tall the player is compared to a spider. With just a wooden shovel, we're gonna make your door look 10 times more realistic. Since by changing the grass that's underneath the door to a grass path, now it'll finally have that small gap underneath that'll make it look like a real door. Because at least in real life, if there's no gap underneath the door, it's not opening that much. So this will fix our ones in Minecraft, all while being insanely simple to do as well. How do we get this fish inside of a block? Well, silly as it may seem, the answer is actually pretty cheap. All we have to use is a waterlogged chest, an item frame with a map, and then place a glass block over top. And if we follow the steps just like this user lays out, we'll be able to get our own tropical fish inside of our blue glass aquarium. Or rather, should I say a fish bowl? Because at this point, it's pretty small. But I think that adds to the charm, and it's definitely worth building in your next base. Little details can go a long way to beefing up your build. So while your friend might just stop at building a nice looking base, you went the extra step with this. As you can see, invisible item frames are the solution. Throw a couple banners into place, and it can add a fun detail to any mailbox that you place outside your house. It's not exactly a letter from Hogwarts, but the thought still counts. If we were to tuck this birch trap door into the corner, then you'll notice that the white inside of the texture makes it into a pretty great bed for your dog or your cat. And at that point, just add in an item frame with some food nearby, and I think this will make for the perfect spot for your pet pal to hang out. This is my pet parrot, but it needs a cage. And since it's so small, it doesn't need a whole pen like regular animals. But it can also fly, so the fence isn't that helpful. Enter the scaffolding block. With a single scaffolding like this, it looks like a wooden bird cage, and it has just the right amount of room for a pair to sit snug inside. And even when they're in the cage, they'll still have plenty of room to dance when you put on the chirp music disc. We can wait for this build hack to load in, but the truth is, it never will, because that's the whole point. And by mixing together an invisible item frame with a goat horn like this, we can use a command block that constantly updates it so that it rotates and creates this loading screen animation that we see here. Which can be great for making your friends think they have a bad internet connection, or it might just be useful to have for the next time you set up a new map, and you need something for the players to see while you get everything ready. And really, so few of the Minecraft textures are animated, so it's nice to see us make do where we can. Say, for example, you're looking to get yourself up on top of a second floor, but there's no staircase or ladder in sight. Well, if we closely examine this button, we can see that's not an issue. By giving that a press, a slime block will pop out of the floor and launch us to wherever we need to go. It's hidden, it's sneaky, and it's definitely fun to use. So so really, if you haven't taken the time to put together a hidden slime block launcher, what are you waiting for? It's not a big investment to make, and if you don't have any use for it yet, then you should probably find one. It's just that fun to put together. If you have trouble fighting mobs at night, then you might want to brew up some weakness potions. Since surprisingly so, these can render a lot of mobs completely useless. I mean, you'll see as much if we use it on a zombie. They will still do their attack animation, however, you don't even receive a damage tick or a knockback when they do it. And folks, that's on hard difficulties. And it's not just zombies either, this will happen for slime slimes, spiders, and even silverfish. And perhaps my favorite yet, if you use a weakness potion on a cave spider, that'll prevent it from poisoning you too. Which really makes these ankle biters seem a lot less intimidating when you use it like that. From here, this just looks like a smoker. But as soon as we add a lever on top, then it starts to look like an old television set. And granted, we might have to do what this user suggests and squint really hard to see it. But I think for a set piece in an old living room, this can definitely do the trick. And with that folks, YouTube thinks that you might like this video. So see if they're right and have a good one, all right?